FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Depending on where in the world you are, it's either 71017 or 71117. So take your pick, choose your time zone. You know, I've said for so long that we are in for challenging times, and certainly I'm not alone in that. Many people out there have been telling you exactly the same or even more, even better than myself. But somebody who's been at this for far longer than than I ever thought possible, uh, he's had a newsletter for 41 years, set up the Asia Pacific Children's Fund to help orphans throughout Asia, uh, moved out of the country to the Philippines seven years ago. And uh, you're going to want to get his latest newsletter, which is Storm Warning, Understanding and Preparing for the Coming Financial Crisis. Don McElvaney, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kerry. Nice to be with you. Hey, it's great to have you here. And, oh, by the way, check out the site. It's I see a gold company.com slash radio slash and easy to spell. I like indigo, C like Charlie, A like Apple, goldcompany.com. And hey, Don, it's so great to have you on here. You truly are one of the greats in understanding what is going on in the world right now. You've been at it since the 70s, I guess since 1976. I mean, how did you find this voice and how has it kept going all these years, all these decades? Uh, well, Kerry, I, when I started out in college, I was a bit crazy and I got involved with, with some things at the University of Texas many years ago. Politically speaking, uh, yes, I became quite anti-communist. I did some, 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 some intelligence work with uh, an intelligence group and so forth. And that really got me going on the political scene. Then when I became a stockbroker and went to Wall Street, I had some clients who understood some things about gold and gold stocks. And they began to inform me. One of my clients said one day, you're really stupid and I'm going to educate you. And they did. <laughs> and that was around 1970. So be between being kind of wanting to understand what's going on all over the world and take a stand against some of the things that are not good and then coming to understand the gold markets and the financial system it kind of kind of took off uh we started our, our, our precious metals company in 1972 which i guess makes it 45 years old uh but we uh, i started my newsletter in 1976 so i've always had a great interest in global geopolitics global uh, intelligence developments and financial so it's just kind of all come together in our newsletter for quite a few years Wow. And, and uh, you know, what I sense from you and I sense from myself and most of the people who I really look up to in the world, you're a lifelong learner. You didn't just get your degree and say, okay, I'm done. It's it really began a pursuit rather than uh, ending one as it does for so many people out there. Uh, Kerry, we should be learning and studying uh, and, and watching what's going on every day of our life until we draw our last breath. And unfortunately, you can't get it from the mainline media or the Wall Street media or most of the press in America. The media doesn't exactly tell it like it is. But uh, you're right. I mean, we need to be learning. We need to be teachable and wanting to learn and grow until the day we die. Uh, and that's I know that's your philosophy. That's my philosophy. And I think a lot of the people who read our newsletters and that we know feel the same way. It's so important because in my opinion, if you're not growing, you're dying and there's no in between. I agree totally. Okay, so you said something pre-call to me that really resonated that retirement, okay, the idea of retirement, of literally retiring uh, you know, to actually cease working had zero interest to you and actually nothing could be, could be further from your aspirations for yourself. I think retirement is the dumbest concept in the world. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I read my Bible and I can't find it anywhere in the Bible. But retiring is just to sit down, be bored and wait to die. To me, the most exciting years of your life where you're making things happen are, are at, at the time that most people are retiring. You've built up a lifetime of experience and understanding. Uh, you want to go out and share that with the world. You want to go out and, and, and make waves. You want to make a difference. So to me, the concept of retirement, you should retire 
retire the day you die. That's the time <laughs> you should retire. In the meantime, you should make things happen. You, it's when you're best equipped, when people are best equipped uh, for life, they've had more experience, that's when they decide to sit down and do nothing. I think it's pathetic. So it's certainly opposite of the way I think. I, I work with my orphanages out in Asia and we've never been busier in our lives, had more fun in our lives. And, and gosh, I can't imagine just sitting around watching television, playing golf, whatever retired people do. <laughs> it just sounds horrible to me. Yeah, it sounds like a nightmare. And it sounds like just uh, just a recipe for a much earlier grave. I will die with my boots on for certain uh, health permitting, of course, and and financial health permitting. Regardless what happens with the finances, um, I'm not about to quit what I'm doing. At this point, I think learning is what helps keep your mind young. It sure does. It sure does. And besides, you have a mission. Your mission is to help people all around the world understand the time. They're not going to get it from the media. They're not going to get it uh, you know, in most places they would normally go. And so your mission is to help people understand the times and how many millions of people out there really are struggling to understand what's going on. So <laughs> keep on going. Keep on keeping on as long as you can. Hey, it's so it's such a, it's such a good way to be. It's such a great way to go because uh, we've got a limited amount of time here. You really should be making the most of it. And and that's what I like about you. You're still writing a newsletter 41 years later. You certainly don't need to be doing it. What can you tell us about what's going on in the world expressed in your latest uh, newsletter, which if uh, you didn't catch it when we if you just turned in, it's storm warning, understanding and preparing for the coming financial crisis. I mean, that says a lot, but, but what does it really say here, Don? Uh, I think we're in the most dangerous period we've been in uh, financially, economically, and maybe even geopolitically in the world since World War II, since the Great Depression and so forth. There's, there's been massive abuse of the financial system, Wall Street, uh, the big banks, the central banks around the world, they've abused the, the financial system and built the greatest debt pyramid in the history of the world, hundred trillion dollars in bond debt, uh, over a quadrillion dollars in derivatives debt, and we saw that begin to melt down in 2000, 2007 and 2008. It's a lot bigger now than it was then. So I think we're facing a crisis that is going to be much, much larger than we saw in 1929. In the year 2000, when things begin to uh, take a serious dip in 2007, I think we're on the verge of a global financial meltdown. And sadly, I think what's going to follow that global financial meltdown is going to be war. And I, I, I write a lot about the potential for war and what's going on in the Middle East and Asia and uh, Russia and so forth. And I, I, see, I see the most unstable times in any of our lifetimes on the immediate horizon. Yeah. Well, certainly, uh, certainly that's a minority view in this day and age. I mean, if you think, if you read what the mainstream press says, you know, between Obama, Obama saved us all, saved the system. Everything's going to be fine now. We're going to go back to normalcy, normal times. But is that really what's going to happen? Is that really what has happened? No, no. I think, you know, they've accused Donald Trump and all this fake news and the, and, and, the, and the conservative press and the alternate press of fake news. Most of the news that's out there, whether it's CNN, whether it's Washington Post, whether it's New York Times, is fake news. The people are not getting the truth. They're not they're not being told what is really happening. Sadly, there's a lot of big people, powerful people that are making tons of money off of all the speculation in the markets that, that there are no more. Uh, Carrie, there are no more free markets. Free markets cease to exist probably over the last 10 or 15 years, but no, no more so than right now. All of the markets are fully manipulated. The stock market is being propped up. And by the way, it's the biggest bubble in the history of U.S. stocks. Uh, the stock market is being propped up and manipula manipulated by Wall Street, the big banks, uh, by our own central bank, the Federal Reserve. Uh, the gold market, by the way, is being manipulated and pushed down. Uh, and th there are no free markets. And so if people don't understand the manipulation and how the world really works, the rich are going to get richer and most everybody else is, is, is going to be broke. Uh, the bubbles that we have in stocks, in bonds, in real estate, in derivatives, 
are the biggest financial bubbles in the history of the world. And they are very, very close to bursting. And everybody who doesn't understand that is not going to be prepared. And it's going to be absolutely swamped when this thing happens. The big guys understand it, and they're definitely prepared for it. And what about the central banks? What is their true role at this point, and what are they really doing at, right now in terms of either perpetuating this thing or, or trying to solve the problem? In theory, their role is to create financial stability and economic prosperity. In reality, Kerry, their role is to control things for the politically elite and the financial elite uh, to, to, to take care of the banks, which are very, very powerful. Big banks practically rule the world. Uh, and so the central banks uh, are the money machines. They're the printing presses. Uh, whenever things get difficult, they just print money by the trillions all over the world. Uh, they've printed, I think, close to $225, $230 trillion in debt. And they turn around and they sell this debt, this debt paper to people all over the world. And people say, oh, thank you. We trust you. Central banks will buy more and more of it. And so uh, they, the, the biggest creators of the world's largest financial bubble, which is right now, are the central banks. But they exist to protect certain very, very powerful people in each of the countries that they're in. Uh, they exist to protect the banking system and the big banks. They don't really exist to help most of the rest of us. <laughs> most of the rest yeah. of us are on our own. So the central banks are not our friends. I don't think the real big banks that are helping to manipulate the gold market and prop up, prop up the stock market and so forth. So, right. but reality, uh, Kerry, one day reality finally sets in. They can only manipulate things and create an illusion for so long, and finally reality and the truth happens. We saw it in 1929. We saw it with the gold market. When the gold market broke out, and as much as they wanted to stop it in the 1970s, the gold market went up 2,500%. Silver went up 2,600%. Uh, they can only suppress markets or prop up markets for so long and then finally, the dam breaks and everything goes out, goes the opposite direction. And I think we're very close to that now. And timing wise, timing is always the hard thing, right? Because you just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, Mark Twain, I think, said it best. He said, truth is stranger than fiction. Fiction is limited by the imagination and truth isn't. That's really where we're kind of at here, isn't it? Uh, it really is. Uh, it really is. Uh, and uh, I would say that their ability to manipulate, and by the way, that I talk about that, that the manipulation of the markets a lot in that special report, that, that, that last newsletter that I mentioned, that you mentioned a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Their ability to manipulate the markets always goes a little further than we expect. Uh, they've suppressed the gold market uh, for the last five years. They've kept the stock market propped up. The stock market is now more overpriced than any time in U.S. financial or stock market history, far more overpriced than it was in 1929. Uh, so yes, they can manipulate things, but at some point they begin to run out of gas. Now, what's going to trigger their running out of gas? I think probably a collapse in the U.S. dollar. Uh, the Russians, the people in the Middle East, the Chinese people in Asia are dumping dollars. They're beginning to sell out of dollars very rapidly. Uh, the whole dollar financial system is very, very shaky. Uh, the post-war uh, uh, euro dollar, petro dollar system that was set up to benefit primarily the United States is now falling apart. So I think that's going to be part of it. Then I think you're going to have uh, black swan collapses, whether it's banks in Europe, uh, uh, some uh, financial crises in China and so forth. Something is going to trigger this. And, and you know, when you got the dominoes lined up, you just push one domino and finally, boom, overnight, they all go down. So I think there's many things out there. There are very smart people, a heck of a lot smarter than me, people like David Stockman, who was a financial mm -hmm. advisor during sure. the uh, uh, high up in the, in the Reagan administration and so forth. They believe that this thing can't make it past this fall, October, mm -hmm. November, that things will fall apart. The Chinese, I, I live out in Asia, and so I have a lot of contact with people in the financial industry out here. Many of the people out here are expecting a financial collapse to come as early as this fall. And of course, <laughs> what are the Chinese and the Asians doing? Uh, to prepare for it, they're buying gold, gold like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> Most gold. of the West gold is now moved to Asia. 
I and, know. And th- this is something interesting, Terry. Gold always moves ahead of when 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 a financial uh, area is begins to go down politically, financially, and everything. The gold moves out of that region and moves to another region, and now all the gold is moving out to Asia. Yeah, we know that that's been the case for at least the past ten years, and probably longer than that. Uh, yeah, but. I think there's been some secret hoarding going on all parts of the world uh, that doesn't really get written about. Have no proof other than, like you say, these people a lot smarter than us. And, uh, you know, they've been planning for this for a long, long time already. So if it's going to come to pass, they're going to be ready for it ahead of everybody, right? Yeah, I think the knowledgeable insiders who will tell you gold is a terrible investment (laughs) are buying gold. Uh, I think that's true. Unfortunately, the average American doesn't understand because he's been brainwashed and dumbed down by the media, by Wall Street, by the educational system. So the great majority of Americans don't understand gold. I would guess that less than 1% of the American people own gold. Europeans understand it a little better. People in the Middle East understand it better still. And the people in uh, in Asia understand it almost completely. Well, I, I, uh, So <laughs> I, the, the insiders know, and they are doing something about it. But most of the people are not, unfortunately, here in the States. I have to tell you a funny story. I met this guy who was doing a thing in China, helping people to sell on Amazon. And we went to China. And we were in a like second tier city called Iwu, which its claim to fame is it has the largest general purpose merchandise market, wholesale market in the world. The thing is six and a half kilometers long, four stories yeah. tall. And this guy said, are you buying gold? What are you doing? He said, no, real estate. Real estate goes up 20% a year. Uh, so there's a lot of unsophisticated Chinese who even, I said, your government has been telling you for years to buy gold. Why haven't you done it? Well, you know, it was like, but real estate's a better investment. And, you know, it's, um, I just think there's a lot of people all over the world, Don, who have no sense of what's coming maybe we'll hopefully you and i will both be wrong and they'll defy mathematics right but in the event that they're not that they won't most of the world is unprepared for this well there's a there's an old uh truth that says that the majority is always wrong (laughs) the majority of the people in any country at any time don't really understand what's going on uh and they're usually on the wrong side of time uh so only a tiny minority a remnant if you will really understand whether it's in china asia or whatever i would say there's a greater number of the people in asia in india in china and so forth that do understand and are buying gold than you will find anywhere in the west mm-hmm. they have their bubbles out here I, I i go to china fairly regularly i see what's going on china is an amazing industrial power they yes. will be the manufacturing leader and industrial leader of the world over the next 50 to 100 years. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, as our manufacturing is cratering, there's, 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 they can, they, there, there's is going up, up, up. Uh, they have their financial bubbles, just like we have our financial mm-hmm. bubbles in the West. And, and there, there's a debate: will, will the financial crisis and domino effects start in China? Will it start? I don't know. It could, or will it start in Europe with a banking failure, or in America? Could play any of the above any of the above. The people who will recover the most and the fastest will be the people who have the gold. The second golden rule is he he who has the gold makes Makes the the rules. rules. Yes. The Chinese have 15 to 20,000 tons of gold. And and the... uh, uh, the so-called uh, uh, the, the, the BRIC countries have, have accumulated probably 27,000 tons of gold. America mm-hmm. doesn't have any gold left. Uh, the big joke, the big the big charade is that the gold is still in Fort Knox. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It was frittered away in the 60s and 70s. The comics doesn't have gold. So as these powerful people on Wall Street keep shorting gold, one of these days, and they're making billions. They've they've been running oh, the yeah. gold price up and down between 12 and 1300 dollars for the for the last for the last couple of months, and they they're totally manipulating it. And they're making their tens of billions of dollars as they're doing so. But there's virtually no gold left in the comics. And as some foreign holders like Chinese, the Chinese will buy long contracts of gold on the COMEX. But what happens when they want to take delivery of the gold and there's no gold there? At that price, the pri- at that point, the price of gold literally explodes. So the financial games that the powers that be in America have been playing for a number of years, they are, I think, about to come to an end. 
And that's what David Stockman and a lot of the other people who are really smart people, that's what they see coming. And they see it, they, they see it coming not in years, but in months. Months. Huh? Well, I hope they're wrong, but it certainly would not surprise me if they're right. Uh, we've been talking about this for years already, Don, for years. Yeah. And you know, there's just no free, uh, there's no free lunch here, right? It's uh, no, no free lunch, no free lunch. Uh, but what I think your mission in life and our mission in life with my newsletter and our gold coin company is to help people understand the times and get prepared. Uh, if people are prepared and understand what's coming, they can survive and they can even prosper in the difficult times. Most people won't be prepared. Most people are listening to CNN and the New York Times and Washington Post and so forth and, and CNBC. But the, the people who are prepared who understand, and that's what your mission and my mission is, is to try to help people understand the times. I think they'll do well. And they will be people who will help rebuild on the other side of the big ugly that's coming. So I just hope and pray that there's more and more people that will begin to see the truth, stop listening to the television and the government and the, and the central bank right. propaganda and start preparing because those are going to be the people who are going to survive, prosper and hope to rebuild on the other side of, of the big crisis that's coming. And it's better to be one of those than to be one of the others. Even, even if you don't have massive resources, you can still prepare prepare, can't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's so many ways to prepare. In fact, I go into a lot of that detail in that, in that storm warning, uh, uh, newsletter that I said, so we sent out. There's many ways to prepare. First of all, reduce your debt. Debt kills, and especially in a major downturn. So reduce your debts and get your debt down to as, as low as zero as possible. I personally think with the biggest stock market bubble in history that people ought to be completely out of the stock market, maybe with the exception of gold stocks, gold and silver shares, which I think will do very well when gold and silver fi finally start to move. Um, I think people need to probably have a little cash on hand in the event that the banks close in a financial crisis or we have some other uh, riots in the street, martial law, who knows, things are destabilizing very rapidly in, in our country, as you know. Uh, so I think having some cash on hand makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I've always preferred to live in a, in, a, in a more rural type part of the country uh, than living in a major city because I think the major cities are going to become war zones uh, as we're seeing more riots and crime and so forth. If things really destabilize economically, I think the big cities are going to be uh, very, very problematic. Um, so I think certainly having gold, I think people ought to have 25 percent of their net worth in gold, probably 85 percent in, in, in gold and coins and maybe 15 percent in silver. Uh, I think I think it's just a time to be very conservative. It's a time to tighten our belts and say, hey, we're going to prepare for the tough times. And let me tell you something. The big guys are doing this. As much as they're touting the stock market and, and, and all these things, they are preparing. They're, 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 they're getting retreats in remote parts of the world. I think, as you said earlier, they probably are buying gold. And so I think the big guys see what's coming and they're preparing. All of us need to prepare. There's just a lot of things we can do if we're willing to look at the truth and say, okay, here's what's coming now. What am I going to do to survive? Our grandparents back in the Great Depression, they were survivors. They fought their way through the Great Depression, and we can do the same thing through the coming Great Depression. Yeah, so it's going to be that bad, social unrest, and everything else. And yet, you know, you look the past eight years, nine years, Don, they've kept a lid on things. They've managed to actually stop the thing from imploding. But like you said, it's coming to an end. Well, it's a little bit like a drug addiction, uh, Kerry. You can uh, take drugs and you're, you know, there's a diminishing returns with your drugs. So you have to keep yeah. taking more and more and more. Uh, <laughs> so the principal diminishing returns work. Yeah. So you take more and more and more. And you know, it's amazing. Sometimes drug addicts can keep it going for years and years and years, but at some point they will OD at some point right. because they have to keep taking larger and larger doses. And this is exactly, this is exactly what they did with the financial system mm -hmm. under Obama, un, under Bush before him. Uh, they just kept pumping more and more and more money into the system. They they kept printing more and more dollars. We've got $20 trillion in debt. They've increased that debt by $10 trillion in, 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 in just the last eight years. And so they yet, like the drug dealer, they can keep it going longer than you think. But at some point, the drug dealer will crash and probably die. And that's exactly what's coming with the system. They have kept it going with their money printing. 
it's beginning to come to an end because the dollar is fixing to crash and it's the world's reserve currency and it is begin it's it's very close to crashing people all over the world are getting out of dollars we're seeing dollar the dollar drop against most of the currencies right now out in Europe and I think out in Asia and I think this is what's going to be the trigger yeah well uh for, you know you could very well be right um you know, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> hey, it would be great for all of us to be wrong. And the good thing is we've been wrong or as far as the timing goes, it hasn't happened yet. But just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. The math tells the story. So I would urge everyone go over to icagoldcompany.com slash radio slash. Uh, you can call up and get uh, Get a free copy of the newsletter, uh, Don's newsletter. The number is 855-638-5616, 855-638-5616. And it, uh, let me ask you a question, Don. If the crash happens, are you going to keep writing the newsletter after that? I think about that all the time. As long as there's an audience for people out there who are thinkers and who want to know the truth, I will try to keep writing the newsletter. So kind of like with your radio, you've got a mission. You've got a cause. It's not yeah. just a job. It's a cause. And, and my newsletter, trying to help people understand, is a cause. I believe God called me to that cause 41 years ago. And until he tells me to stop, I'm going to keep going. So I hope I can keep writing it for many, many years. Now, if I can't find any audience out there and nobody wants to listen, then I'll just spend more time with my orphans out here, which I'm doing anyway. So yeah, I, I hope to continue it for a long, long time. And uh, God willing, you and me both, uh, there's nothing else I'd rather do. I explored uh, 25 other careers while I've been doing this, waiting for things to happen. And I always come back uh, to the same place. There's nothing else I want to do. I don't care about uh, potential financial reward. There's nothing else that's going to make me happy. And, you know, so I know exactly where you are. Anyways, I uh, should just give out the website again, icagoldcompany.com slash radio slash. And Don, it's been a total pleasure. We'll have a link to your site in the show notes to our interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Email me, kl at kerrylutz.com. Any questions for Don or myself? And find us on our Twitter feed, at Kerry Lutz, and our Facebook page, which is at Financial Survival Network. Don, uh, anything else uh, you want to say before we conclude? Uh, well, number one, I want to thank you for what you're doing. You've got a mission of helping people and helping people understand the time. So I deeply appreciate what you're doing. Um, I would say that hard times are loaded with opportunities. I'm excited about the times we live in, even though I think they're going to be very difficult. I think we could see war, depression, financial collapse, a lot of things. These are exciting times. These are exciting times we live in. Uh, I think you can make a bigger difference in life when things are not going well and everybody's looking for answers than when everything is normal and fine and so forth. So I think these are exciting times. I think what you're trying to do and what I'm trying to do to wake up and inform and help people get prepared is really great. So I would just say to you, keep on keeping on. You want to do this until they carry you out feet first. <laughs> and they probably will, uh, hopefully later rather than sooner, but no doubt they will one day, uh, as, as with you. And, uh, you know, you really put it well because it's a, everybody could be a genius when times are good because everything works. And yet when times are bad, that's when the true visionaries surface. Not that I consider myself to be a visionary, but uh, my intent is to put you in touch with people like Don, who are the visionaries who saw this thing 40 years ago, and nothing's changed during that time to make their visions any less compelling or probable. Don, been a total pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, promise me that uh, you will come on again. Oh, hey, you know what? We forgot to mention your tour. So just tell us uh, quickly, you don't have to mention the dates, just the areas where you're going to be and when. Uh, well, we're doing it for a month. I think the crisis is big enough, so big, that I'm coming back on a speaking tour for the first time in 15 years. I used to do this all the time around the country. Uh, and my son, David, who runs who runs our precious metals company and, and uh, McIlvenny Wealth, uh, Financial Wealth, uh, he and I are going to be speaking in Palo Alto, California, in Seattle, uh, down in the Los Angeles area, in Denver, in the Phoenix area. 
Um, and if, if there's people out there who want to know what's going on, we'd love for them to come and through, the, through that phone number or, or uh, uh, our website, you can find out more detail. And if the response is good, and I hope it will be, uh, then we probably hope to do that in the eastern United States uh, sometime uh, probably in the month of November. So uh, we feel that there's, there's so much coming that we want to come out and tell as many people as we can what's coming. So if you happen to be in the Western states or maybe later in November in the Eastern states, I think I would hope maybe I can get down to Florida to your neighborhood to do one in November. Uh, Carrie, uh, we would love to have any of your people come and you too, Carrie. Yeah. Well, we'll talk again when you get to the second part, the Eastern part of the tour, we'll post up the link so people can find out your exact schedule. Don, again, a million thanks, entirely grateful to you and honored to have you on the show and keep up your incredible work, especially with those orphans. And we will talk to you again very soon. Thanks so much, Carrie. God bless. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Keep on going. Keep on keeping on as long as you can. Hey, it's so it's such a it's such a good way to be. It's such a great way to go because uh, we've got a limited amount of time here. You really should be making the most of it. And and that's what I like about you. You're still writing a newsletter 41 years later. You certainly don't need to be doing it. What can you tell us about what's going on in the world expressed in your latest uh, newsletter, which if uh, you didn't catch it when we if you just turned in, it's storm warning, understanding and preparing for the coming financial crisis. I mean, that says a lot, but, but what does it really say here, Don? Uh, I think we're in the most dangerous period we've been in uh, financially, economically, and maybe even geopolitically in the world since World War II, since the Great Depression and so forth. There's, there's been massive abuse of the financial system, Wall Street, uh, the big banks, the central banks around the world. They've abused the, the financial system and built the greatest debt pyramid in the history of the world, hundred trillion dollars in bond debt, uh, over a quadrillion dollars in derivatives debt, and we saw that begin to melt down in 2000, 2007 and 2008. It's a lot bigger now than it was then. So I think we're facing a crisis that is going to be much, much larger than we saw in 1929. In the year 2000, when things begin to uh, take a serious dip in 2007, I think we're on the verge of a global financial meltdown. And sadly, I think what's going to follow that global financial meltdown is going to be war. And I, I, I write a lot about the potential for war and what's going on in the Middle East and Asia and uh, Russia and so forth. And I, I, see, I see the most unstable times in any of our lifetimes on the immediate horizon. Yeah. Well, certainly, uh, certainly that's a minority view in this day and age. I mean, if you think, if you read what the mainstream press says, you know, between Obama, Obama saved us all. Okay. The idea of retirement, of literally retiring, uh, you know, to actually cease working had zero interest to you. And actually nothing could be, could be further from your aspirations for yourself. I think retirement is the dumbest concept in the world. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I read my Bible and I can't find it anywhere in the Bible. But retiring is just to sit down, be bored and wait to die. To me, the most exciting years of your life where you're making things happen are, are at, at the time that most people are retiring. You've built up a lifetime of experience and understanding. Uh, you want to go out and share that with the world. You want to go out and, and, and make waves. You want to make a difference. So to me, the concept of retirement, you should retire the day you die. That's the time you should retire. In the meantime, you should make things happen. You, it's when you're best equipped, when people are best equipped uh, for life, they've had more experience. That's when they decide to sit down and do nothing. I think it's pathetic. So it's certainly opposite of the way I think. I, I work with my orphanages out in Asia and we've never been busier in our lives, had more fun in our lives. And, and gosh, I can't imagine just sitting around watching television, playing golf, Whatever retired people do, it just sounds horrible to me. Yeah, it sounds like a nightmare. And it sounds like 
just uh, just a recipe for a much earlier grave. I will die with my boots on for certain uh, health permitting, of course, and and financial health permitting. Regardless of what happens with the finances, um, I'm not about to quit what I'm doing. At this point, I think learning is what helps keep your mind young. It sure does. It sure does. And besides, you have a mission. Your mission is to help people all around the world understand the times. They're not going to get it from the media. They're not going to get it uh, you know, in most places they would normally go. And so your mission is to help people understand the times and how many millions of people out there really are struggling to understand what's going on. So. <laughs> Save the system. Everything's going to be fine now. We're going to go back to normalcy, normal times. But is that really what's going to happen? Is that really what has happened? No, no. I think, you know, they've accused Donald Trump and all this fake news and the, and, and, the, and the conservative press and the alternate press of fake news. Most of the news that's out there, whether it's CNN, whether it's Washington Post, whether it's New York Times, is fake news. The people are not getting the truth. They're not they're not being told what is really happening. Sadly, there's a lot of big people, powerful people that are making tons of money off of all the speculation in the markets. There are no more, uh, Kerry, there are no more free markets. Free markets cease to exist probably over the last 10 or 15 years, but no, no more so than right now. All of the markets are fully manipulated. The stock market is being propped up. And by the way, it's the biggest bubble in the history of U.S. stocks. Uh, the stock market is being propped up and manipula manipulated by Wall Street, the big banks, uh, by our own central bank, the Federal Reserve. Uh, the gold market, by the way, is being manipulated and pushed down. Uh, and th there are no free markets. And so if people don't understand the manipulation and how the world really works, the rich are going to get richer and most everybody else is, is, is going to be broke. Uh, the bubbles that we have in stocks, in bonds, in real estate, in derivatives are the biggest financial bubbles in the history of the world. And they are very, very close to bursting. And everybody who doesn't understand that is not going to be prepared and it's going to be absolutely swamped when this thing happens. The big guys understand it, and they're definitely prepared for it. And what about the central banks? What is their true role at this point, and what are they really doing at, right now in terms of either perpetuating this thing or, or trying to solve the problem? In theory, their role is to create financial stability and economic prosperity. In reality, Carrie, their role is to control things for FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Depending on where in the world you are, it's either 71017 or 71117. So take your pick, choose your time zone. You know, I've said for so long that we are in for challenging times, and certainly I'm not alone in that. Many people out there have been telling you exactly the same or even more, even better than myself. But somebody who's been at this for far longer than than I ever thought possible, uh, he's had a newsletter for 41 years, set up the Asia Pacific Children's Fund to help orphans throughout Asia, uh, moved out of the country to the Philippines seven years ago. And uh, you're going to want to get his latest newsletter, which is Storm Warning, Understanding and Preparing for the Coming Financial Crisis. Don McElvaney, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kerry. Nice to be with you. Hey, it's great to have you here. And, oh, by the way, check out the site. It's I see a gold company dot com slash radio slash and easy to spell. I like indigo, C like Charlie, A like Apple, goldcompany.com. And hey, Don, it's so great to have you on here. You truly are one of the greats in understanding what is going on in the world right now. You've been at it since the 70s, I guess since 1976. I mean, how did you find this voice and how has it kept going all these years, all these decades? Uh, well, Kerry, I, when I started out in college, I was a bit crazy and I got involved with, with some things at the University of Texas many years ago. 
Politically speaking, uh, yes, I became quite anti-communist. I did some 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 intelligence work with uh, an intelligence group and so forth, and that really got me going on the political scene. Then, when I became a stockbroker and went to Wall Street, I had some clients who understood some things about gold and gold stocks, and they began to inform me. One of my clients said one day, "You're really stupid, and I'm going to educate you," and they did. <laughs> and that was around 1970. So, be- between being kind of wanting to understand what's going on all over the world and take a stand against some of the things that are not good. And then coming to understand the gold markets and the financial system, it kind of kind of took off. Uh, we started our, our, our precious metals company in 1972, which I guess makes it 45 years old. Uh, but we, uh, I started my newsletter in 1976. So I've always had a great interest in global geopolitics, global uh, and intelligence de- developments, and financial. So it's just kind of all come together in our newsletter for quite a few years. Wow. And, and uh, you know, what I sense from you and I sense from myself and most of the people who I really look up to in the world, you're a lifelong learner. You didn't just get your degree and say, okay, I'm done. It's It really began a pursuit rather than uh, ending one as it does for so many people out there. Uh, Kerry, we should be learning and studying uh, and, and watching what's going on every day of our life until we draw our last breath. And unfortunately, you can't get it from the mainline media or the Wall Street media or most of the press in America. The media doesn't exactly tell it like it is. But uh, you're right. I mean, we need to be learning. We need to be teachable and wanting to learn and grow until the day we die. Uh, and that's I know that's your philosophy. That's my philosophy. And I think a lot of the people who read our newsletters and that we know feel the same way. It's so important because in my opinion, if you're not growing, you're dying and there's no in between. I agree totally. Okay, so you said something pre-call to me that really resonated that retirement, 